Hello 3D printing friends. Today on the BB3D channel we're going to go over how to get started with Prusa Slicer for the Mac, particularly with regard to using it with non-Prusa printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to get set up with Prusa Slicer on our Mac, and in addition to setting it up for my Prusa i3 Mark III, which is dead simple, I'm going to show you how to set it up for non-Prusa printers as well. In particular, we'll build a profile for an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. It's going to take us about 15 minutes to go over all the settings, so let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is download Prusa Slicer. And to make that easier for you, there is a link in the description. Once you click that link, you'll see its intro page. Now that we're on the same page, see what I did there? Let's scroll down and click that big orange download button. While you might expect that a download would begin, you would be mistaken. Instead, we have a decision to make. Which of all these other download buttons are we supposed to click? Okay, joking aside, ordinarily, we would click the Drivers and Apps Download button. But right now, we're in a rare situation where the Windows, Mac, and Linux versions are not in sync. It says that the 2.2.8 version contains Windows fixes only, and Mac OS and Linux users will use the 2.2.7 package. Since this download page is designed to show you only the current version, we'll need to click down here to browse older versions. So down here in the 2.2.7 section, we will click Download for Mac OS. And now the download begins. Once that's downloaded, we can close our browser window, then locate and open up the thing we just downloaded. Check your usual download location. For me, that's the Downloads folder, and I have an icon for it here in the dock. So I'll click that, then I'll click the disk image we downloaded from Prusa's site. After a moment, that opens up in a new window with some very basic instructions, which essentially are, drag the original Prusa drivers icon to the application folder icon. So let's follow those instructions. If you're prompted for administrator credentials to add this to the Applications folder, go ahead and enter those. There, all done. Now we can go into the Applications folder and see what we got. So from the Finder, click the Go menu, then click Applications. Oh, and we don't need to have this Prusa disk image mounted any longer, so click its Eject button here in the sidebar. It isn't clear from the icon, but Original Prusa Drivers is a folder. Let's open it up. There are a handful of things inside, but what we're mainly interested in is the Prusa Slicer icon. So to make things easier going forward, let's take that Prusa Slicer icon and drag it into the dock. That will make it easily accessible in the future. Now we can close the original Prusa Drivers window. And finally, let's click the Prusa Slicer icon that's in the dock to get this show on the road. The very first time you launch it, you may see a dialog box telling you that this file was downloaded from the internet asking if you want to open it. So if you see that, click the Open button, and then Prusa Slicer will start up. On the very first launch, it presents you with a Configuration Assistant. To get started with it, click the Next button. So the next screen has to do with Prusa's FFF printers, the plastic melters. In. I don't have a Mark III S, so I'll uncheck that box, but I do have a Mark III with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it, so I will check that box. Now, even if you don't have a Prusa machine, do this anyway. By adding a Prusa printer here, we're going to get a whole pile of filament presets, and that is super handy. We can either use them as is or customize them later for filament that we have on hand. Now, click the Next button, which takes us to the next screen, which has to do with Prusa's resin printers. I don't have one, so I'm not checking any boxes there. Let's click Next one more time. And that takes us to the Custom Printer Setup screen. And this is why we're here, really, so check the box to define a custom printer profile. We want to set up a profile for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, so let's type Ender 3 into the Custom Profile Name field, and then click the Next button. On the Firmware Type screen, set it to Marlin, and then click Next. On the Bed Shape and Size screen, set it to Rectangular, and then set it to a size of 220 by 220. Leave the origin at 0 and 0. Weirdly, we're never given the opportunity to set the maximum print height in this configuration assistant, so we'll have to set that ourselves later. For now, click Next. 
On the filament and nozzle diameter screen, we'll use the default values of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and 1.75 millimeter filament. This is what the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro are set up to handle from the factory. If you've installed a different nozzle diameter, specify it here. Then click Next. On the extruder and bed temperature screen, we can leave the temperatures set where they are. This information is used to create a default filament profile for the printer, but it's such a bare bones profile that we're not even going to use it. Instead, we'll be making use of the filament profiles that we got by adding the Mark III earlier. So to continue on, click Next. Now we're on the final screen and Prusa Slicer wants to know if it's okay to check for updates and to automatically update its built-in presets. This is perfectly fine, so you can leave both of those checkboxes checked and then click the Finish button. Okay, now we're all done with the Configuration Assistant. So remember how we weren't able to set the maximum print height earlier? Well, in addition to that, there are a few other things that we need to adjust before we can slice and print. So let's go set those things up now. We should be looking at the settings for the Ender 3 here, but if you're instead looking at the settings for a different printer, select Ender 3 from the pop-up menu here. Now to adjust the printer profile for the Ender 3, click the gear icon next to the printer pop-up menu, or click the printer settings tab at the top of the window. Both do the same thing. Prusa Slicer tries to make things easier for new users by hiding some of the more complex settings from view, but some of the defaults for custom printer profiles just completely miss the mark. So we're going to need to ask Prusa Slicer to show us all of the available settings. And we'll do this by clicking the expert button here in the top right corner of the window. Once you do that, a whole bunch of additional options are presented and each one has a color tag associated with it. Items tagged green are visible in simple mode, Items tagged yellow are visible in advanced mode, and items tagged red are visible in expert mode. Let's just go through the items in the list on the left side of the window and work our way down, making the necessary changes as we go. First, we need to adjust the maximum print height to match what the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro can do. So in the list on the left, click General. And because we have all of the available settings visible, we have access to the maximum print height setting. Look for it in the size and coordinates group in the main part of the window. The default value is 200 millimeters, but for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, this value should be 250 millimeters. Go ahead and make that change. Next, look down toward the bottom of the window in the firmware group. Uncheck the Supports Stealth Mode checkbox. And in the Advanced group, uncheck the Enable Variable Layer Height Feature checkbox. Moving on, click Custom G-Code in the list on the left side of the window. The start and end G-Code here is really super basic, so I'm going to share my starting and ending G-code with you. To make things easier for you, I've got the code snippets in the description, so you can just copy and paste them. So I'll just select everything here in the start G-code group, delete it, and paste in my own G-code. I'm not going to go over everything that's in it, but it is fully commented, so you should be able to read it and see what each line does. And I'm going to do the same thing for my end G-code. Select everything in the group, delete it, and paste in my own. And that's it for custom G-code. Let's move on and click Machine Limits in the list on the left. Mostly, this is a matter of setting these to the same values that are in the firmware. This way, Prusa Slicer won't tell the printer to move faster than the speed limit the manufacturer has set. Now, note that these limits are not set in stone, or in silicon, as the case may be. You can adjust these values later, and Prusa Slicer will be able to change these settings by including the appropriate G-code commands when it slices models for the printer. This isn't magic. It's similar to how you can change them yourself from the printer's control panel. As long as you keep your settings within the physical limits of the printer's hardware, everything should be fine. But these values are a great starting point. In case you're wondering, I gathered this information from the printer's control panel by looking through the values that are stored there. So here's how we need to set things. Maximum feed rate X and Y are 500 millimeters per second. Maximum feed rate Z is 5 millimeters per second. And maximum feed rate E is 25 millimeters per second. Maximum acceleration X is 500 millimeters per second. And the same for maximum acceleration Y. Maximum acceleration Z is 100 millimeters per second. And maximum acceleration E is 5,000 millimeters per second. Maximum acceleration when extruding and retracting is 500. Maximum jerk X is 8. Maximum jerk Y is 8. Maximum jerk Z is 0.29. We'll just set that to 0.3. And maximum jerk E is 5 millimeters per second. Minimum feed rate when extruding and minimum travel feed rate are both 0. Moving on, we'll click extruder 1 in the list on the left. 
Most of these settings are good as is, but we do need to adjust the retraction length. Look here in the retraction group. Prusa Slicer assumes a direct drive extruder and sets the default retraction length to 2 mm. For a stock Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, which uses a Bowden style extruder, you'll want to set that to something more like 5.5 mm. The Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro have their retraction speed set to 25 mm per second in firmware, so we want to match that setting here. Change the retraction speed to 25 mm per second. And that's pretty much it for the printer preset. Click that wonderfully retro floppy disk icon next to the preset's name, and then, in the small dialog box which appears, click OK to accept the name. And that will save these settings. Now that we've got the printer defined, we need to work on the print settings, so click on the Print Settings tab. And as before, we're going to work through this list on the left and make changes as necessary. Starting in Layers and Perimeters, we'll set the layer height to 0.2 millimeters. And I like to set the first layer height to 0.24 millimeters. My personal preference is three perimeters, five top layers, and four bottom layers, and you can set these however you like them. The default quality settings are fine the way they are, and in the advanced settings, you can control where the Z seam is going to appear. You can set it to random, nearest, aligned, or rear. I usually leave it on aligned, unless I have a particular model that I know the back isn't going to be seen, and then I will set it specifically to appear at the back of the model. But we'll leave this set for aligned. Then we'll click infill in the list on the left. I typically use a fill density of 10% and a gyroid fill pattern. The rest of the settings can be left at their default values. Next, we'll proceed to skirt and brim in the list on the left. I usually set this for two loops around the model, I leave the distance set at 6 millimeters, and I set the skirt height to two layers. That makes it a lot easier to remove when the print is done. Let's move on to support material in the list on the left. We're going to temporarily turn on the checkbox to generate support material so that we can make some changes. Let's set the overhang threshold to 60 degrees. The 0.2 millimeter contact Z distance is perfect for the 0.2 millimeter layer height that we're using. That means that it will leave a one layer gap between the supports and the model, which makes the supports much easier to remove. Another thing that I've discovered is that changing the XY separation distance from 50% to one millimeter keeps the supports from being too close to the model, again, making them very easy to remove. We're done with support material, so let's uncheck the generate support material checkbox. We only needed that to be able to make these changes. Moving on, we'll click speed in the list on the left. We're going to set this to be a nice medium speed of 40 millimeters per second. We'll set the infill speed to 60 millimeters per second. We'll print supports at 40 millimeters per second. We'll do bridges at 40 millimeters per second. And we'll leave gap fill at 20 millimeters per second. Travel moves we can leave set at 130 millimeters per second. And the first layer speed, I'd like to set that to 20 millimeters per second, just to make sure you get a good first layer that sticks well to the bed. And that's it for our print settings. So we'll save this by clicking again on the little floppy disk icon. This time we'll make the name a little bit more descriptive. We will call it Ender 3 40 millimeters per second at 0.2 millimeters. Then click OK to save it. If you want, you can set up other print settings. The easiest way is to do the equivalent of a save as. Save this profile and call it 60 millimeter per second at 0.2. Then go change your speeds and save it one more time. Then you can see on the pop-up we have more than one print setting available to us, and we can use whichever one we want to suit our mood. Lastly, we need to create a filament profile, so click the Filament Settings tab. You can create as many of these as you like. You can be generic with them or very specific. I tend toward being specific, so I usually have one profile per spool of filament. At the beginning of all this, in the Configuration Assistant, I had you add a Mark III. And the reason for that? Lots and lots of filament presets. We'll take a generic PLA and build on that. Right now, I have some black Overture PLA loaded on the printer, so we'll set up a profile for that. We can change the color as we see fit. It's black filament, so I'll change that to black. The filament diameter is 1.75 millimeters. The extrusion multiplier should be 1. Density is 1.24 grams per cubic centimeter, and if you like, 
you can adjust the cost so Prusa Slicer can estimate printing costs. I'll set this to $18. These temperatures are good for this filament, but I could adjust them if I needed to. Looking here in cooling in the list on the left, we can see that it's set to keep the fan on all the time and auto cooling is enabled. If you have a filament where you want variable fan speeds, you can set that up here and we've got the fan off for the first layer. There are cooling thresholds here at the bottom. This one right here, slow down if layer print time is below 20 seconds, is used to ensure that there is enough time for the previous layer to cool before the next one is printed. That 20 second value is a little long for me. I like to set it to 10 seconds. And that's it for our filament profile. So again, click the floppy disk icon to save it and we'll change the name to Overture PLA Black. Then we'll click OK to save it. Now we can switch over to the Plater tab where we can slice a model and print it. Let's do something simple like an XYZ calibration cube. We'll click Slice Now to slice the file and then Export G-Code to save the file to disk. You can copy the resulting file onto your printer's SD card and put it in your printer to print it, or if you're running Octoprint, you can simply drag it in and start printing that way. Okay, so now that you've seen how to set up Prusa Slicer for an Ender 3, you should be able to set up a profile for your own printer, even if it's not an Ender 3. Remember, the values that were shown here are for my particular printer but they should be a good starting point for a lot of printers. You'll need to know certain particulars, such as the build volume, and you'll need to know the firmware's speed limits on motion. If your printer runs Marlin, you can find this with the control panel on the printer. Go into the control menu, then go into motion, and they're all listed there. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll do my best to help you out. I guess that about does it for this episode, so thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and want to help out, you could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar and links for those are down in the description as well. You could also use the affiliate links in the description if you're shopping on Amazon. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but a tiny portion of any purchase that you make helps fund the channel and it's very much appreciated. Now that I've got Prusa Slicer all set up for my Ender 3, I'm gonna go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.